Hello, I am Jumas and this is the fourth episode of the Supreme Item tutorial series. In the last episode we explained a little bit some basic actions. Before starting I would suggest you to join our Discord server where you will be able to ask for more specific support, suggest new features and see items created by other people. The link of the Discord server is in the description. I would also ask you to put a like to support me and my work with this plugin. In this way you might help other people finding and using this plugin. In this episode we will see projectiles and how to use them. Let's start by explaining what projectiles are. As in real life physics, projectiles are objects that can be thrown in the air, giving them an initial velocity, that follow the laws of projectile motion, since they can be affected by gravity. In Supreme Item, projectiles follow this physics law too. There are currently two different types of projectiles, but more types could be added later on. The ones that I will explain today are projectile action and homing projectile action. Both actions can be found under the meta folder. Let's get now into projectile actions. Let's create an item. Now we can add a right click skill, which is this one. And now we can add a projectile action inside the oncaster actions parameter. Click add, meta folder, and here it is, projectile action. Let's go. Before continuing, let's keep in mind that the behavior of the projectile changes depending on what are the sources and the targets of the skill. For example, if the source and the target are the same, like in this case, the projectile will be shot towards the direction the entity that is holding the item is facing. If the target is a different entity, the projectile will be thrown to him, regardless of the direction the caster is facing. Same thing can be said if the target is a location. Let's now inspect the parameters of the projectile action. Let's start by the initial speed parameter, right here. This represents the initial speed of the projectile. The bigger it is, the faster the projectile will be. This is the gravity parameter. This represents the gravity that is applied to the projectile. The bigger it is, the faster the projectile will fall into the ground. If set to zero, the projectile won't fall and will always keep its initial trajectory. Hitbox size means the size of the cube around the projectile that detects if an entity has been hit. The bigger it is, the easier it will be to hit a specific entity. The max distance parameter is the maximum number of ticks the projectile can leave. Shoot from hand parameter says whether or not the projectile should be shot from the hand or from the head of the caster. Projectile spread represents the maximum imprecision in your projectile in degrees. Let's now move on to more complicated parameters. Let's start with entity, which is this one. This parameter represents an entity that will be spawned on your projectile and will follow its movements. Such entity can't die naturally, can't take damage and can't be interacted, it's just for visual effect. To set an entity, just right click the parameter, select the type of entity you want to create, for example we want to throw a llama spit, so we got to generic entity, which is this one, which contains every entity type and we select the llama spit from this list. So we found it, it's in the second page. We click it and now we can go back. If we want to recreate the entity, we just have to right click this parameter again. Now we can pass on our actions. We have currently three type of actions, but more could be added in the future. Let's start with the on tick actions, which is this one. This parameter specifies the list of actions that will be applied in every tick to the location where the projectile currently is. For example, if we want to make a trail to our projectile, we can simply add a particle action, go to location action, particle action, and every tick, the particle will be spawned on the projectile location. Let's now move on to on block hit actions. This list of actions specifies what happens when a projectile hits a block. In particular, this list of actions targets the location of the hit block. Let's for example add an explosion action here, so we can see it later in action. We have on entity hit actions, which specifies the action that are applied to the entity hit by the projectile. We can add here for example a potion effect with the levitation potion. Here it is. To make the hit entities levitate for example. Let's now try our item. Let's go to slash SILIST GUI. 
that's middle click this and we have our item in hand. Let's right click and we can see that the projectile is a Yama split with a trail of particles behind it. And we can see also that when it hits a block, it just spawns an explosion. Let's now try with that Yama bear. We should make him levitate. As you can see, it's levitating, so our projectile works perfectly. Let's now see how to use homing projectiles. The first thing to remember is that they target entities, not locations. So using this action inside the oncaster actions parameter would be useless, since we would be the source and the target of the projectile. Now we want to decide what we want to achieve. Let's for example say that we want an item that on right click targets the nearest entity near our cursor throws a homing projectile at it that, if it hits, displays some particles. This process in particular is not very trivial, so follow me closely. Let's now create a new item, add the right click skill, here it is, and go inside the oncaster action parameter first. This is where we will work. We need to create an area entities action, which is located under the meta action folder, which is this one. This action will apply a list of actions to all the entities within an area around the targeted location. Let's now modify some parameters. For example, we have a count of zero, which means that every entity is selected. We can put here one, so only one entity is selected. Since the sorter is a proximity sorter, only the nearest entity is counted. We then can modify the max distance, which is the max distance in which entities are targeted by this action. Let's put this to 20 blocks for example. Here it is. Another important parameter to set is the cast from location parameter. This says whether the source of a group of actions should be the target location or the entity who casted the skill. Now we want to set this to false since the entity who casted the skill needs to be the source of our projectile action. Now comes the hard part. We want to select only entities near our cursor. So we go inside the selectors parameter. As we can see here, there is only one starting parameter automatically added. That makes it that the action source won't be targeted by this action. We add a new selector and we select a fov selector, which will select only entities within our field of view. We can now configure from here the angle of our field of view. If we select a low angle, only entities near to our cursor will be selected. For example, I always use 10. Here it is. Now we can go inside the actions parameter of the area entities action and add our homing projectile. The homing projectile is under the meta action folder. Here it is. As we can see, most of the parameters are the same as the ones of normal projectile action. The only additional parameter is turn speed, that defines the speed with which the projectile changes its path. The bigger the parameter is, the more precise the projectile will be. Let's now add a simple particle action to the on projectile tick actions to see the projectile moving. Here it is. Then we can add inside the on hit entity actions parameter another particle action that displays some flames on the hit entity. So we can just this flame, let's set the count to I don't know 100, some speed and some offset. Here we are. Now we got our new item in hand, let's see if it works. If I right click and the Yama is away from my cursor, nothing happens. But if I right click and he is on my cursor, a projectile will be shot and when he hits an entity, he displays some flames. So this works perfectly. So to recap, in this episode we set some projectiles. We saw their most important parameters and we created some items using these projectiles. I hope you have enjoyed this day. In the next episode we will see what are conditions and how they can be used. For this episode is everything and goodbye.